You know what I'm saying? If we allow them to kill two of us in two weeks' time, they are gonna be killing brothers, not just black men, but Latinos and anybody who is this, uh, how do you say, un underemployed or unemployed, it's a target on our backs. And we, so if we don't continue, you know, to, to say something or stand together, it's, it's a wrap. It's gonna be no, none of us are left. None of us gonna be left. We're gonna be extinct. You'll be reading about the used to be black man or used to be Latino man. Are you are you from St. Louis yeah. originally? Yeah. Um, yeah. So how do you you know how do you feel about all the attention that people are that it, the community is getting? Like all the people that are coming from, out um, from all different places in the United States. I got mixed feelings about it. On the one hand, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that the world has come out to see what's going on here. The, pro, the one of the issues I have with it is that while the world came here to see, a lot of people came out here to exploit this situation for their own benefit. A lot of people uh, doing it for the photo ops. Yeah, I went down there and I took a picture, you know what I'm saying? And they could take that back home to where they live and claim that they support the cause. But you, if how can you support the cause if you're not involved? If you're not working hard, using your celebrity status, using your political connections, using your influence in the hood, how can you say you're involved if you're not doing nothing to change it? It's not a black or white thing. They're trying to make it out to be a race thing. It's not a race thing. It's a have and a have not thing. And the people who have don't care about the people who have not. They feel like we should get out here and do something and and, and uh, you know you know their usual argument. I pulled myself up from my bootstraps, blah, blah, blah. They need to get off their lazy ass and get off of welfare and, and do something. Well, oftentimes we try, but we we get held back. Not only are we held back by the by the class, and sometimes by choices that we might have made earlier in life holds us back. We don't. We already got enough strikes against us. Why would the police then come and try to hold us back at the same time? Right. That's that's too much unfairness. That's that's that that's not fair. Can you talk about how you think <clears throat> the police can be held more accountable, or um, you know, can they? Even I think be held that the more accountable uh, given the I think that the badge cameras is a good idea, um, as long as they can't turn them off. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, what's the use in having a badge camera if he could turn it off and then go be the suspect? Um, so that's my, uh, that's one of the uh, feelings I have about it. Also, good police, the good police that are out here need to make sure that they, they have a responsibility to police themselves. Get the bad officers off your force. If, if Don't step out here and tell us that you fair and you for fairness and equality and I run a good police department and we don't have this, uh, we don't discriminate and we do all this training. We do all this, but then you turn right around and know you have racists on your department, like some of the, what, what was on display here. You know, you can't tell me that a police officer who comes out here and points an AR-15 at reporters, women, and children, and, and peaceful protesters is not, doesn't have a problem. You can't tell me that a police officer that is on Twitter or his, you know, or social media blasting the protesters is a, is not a problem. You can't tell me that an officer that is calling us animals and come on, I'll kill you and, and do all of this and that is not a bad officer. If you don't want to get them off your force, give them a desk job. They don't need to be out here dealing with us. Uh, 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 a police officer is a privilege. It's not a right. The, the, if I could talk to all of the police chiefs around the world, around the country, you know, in our country, being a police officer is a right. It's a privilege, just like being able to drive a car is a privilege. If you, um, and you're not always right. There's no way that a police officer can be always right. Just like there's no way I'm gonna be always right. You know what I'm saying? They, you know, they're not robots. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? 
So if you got a bad officer on your force and you stand next to him and you watch him be the suspect and you do nothing about it, you don't report him, you know, because you're worried about him having your back in the streets or whatever, then then we have no way as a public you know, they don't take us seriously when we report the problems. They just think, ah, oh, he got pulled over and now he's just trying to get the officer fired or whatever. You know, sometimes, you know, the public is not always crying wolf. And you know that you got racist officers in your ranks. You know they ain't right. And you still side with them. Can you tell me, so you're from St. Louis, right? Yes. Are you from this area specifically? Yes. Can you tell me, um, like a memory you have with the police that sticks out to you, positive or negative? Um, I mean, I got I got positive and negative yeah. uh, uh, experiences with the police. You know, I, I remember being 21, 22 years old, getting pulled over and taken to the police station and being smacked by a black officer. You know what I'm saying? Because he thought I was a smart ass. And I probably I was. You know what I mean? But still, that don't mean it's right for you to try to exact your own type of justice. You know what I mean? Your job is to cite, arrest, deliver me safely to the courts and let them deal with me. It's not up to you to beat me. So what made you decide? You know, they make it okay. I'm sorry. It's, 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 explain to me why it's okay for a police officer to beat somebody, but then they turn around and arrest us and tell us it's illegal. It's domestic violence. You're not supposed to do that. That's assault. It's hypocritical. It's hypocritical. It's, not, it's hypocritical. Can you just say what made you decide to come out here and organize no the food? My life is on the line. Even though I'm older, I'm still hood. And these I, these my people out here. These are my people. I represent these people. I'm, you know what I mean? I, I have a gift to be able to articulate speech a little bit. And and I had to, I had a vehicle and means with which to do what we doing out here. I had no choice. I had no choice. I had no choice. For, you know, I came out here, I observed what was going on, I didn't make any rash judgments, you know what I'm saying? Um, I, 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 I took a look at what was going on and I saw for myself, just like everybody else. I saw for myself what was going on, you know what I'm saying? And um, I had to be involved. I had to be involved, you know, it, as a community. If we don't, if we allow them, if we allow negative police officers to stain their badge twice in two weeks, apparently, the facts all the way ain't yet, but just on the surface, it's just something about two brothers unarmed being murdered or killed in a two week time period, something's wrong with that. You know what I mean? And if we allow them to set that standard here, they gonna duplicate it elsewhere. And pretty soon we gonna be in a museum. It's gonna be a statue of a brother in a museum, extinct. Yeah. Did you, did you know, um, did you know Mike Brown No, personally? but if I did, I would have hired him, cause I, that's what I do. Yeah. We, I work on houses, I also got this food truck thing going on, and I hired the Mike Browns because nobody else will hire him. Yeah. I hire him. In a heartbeat. Thank no you. application on the spot. Boom. Do you, let me, let me, let's do some statistics real fast. They had about 500 police out here, right? Armed with tanks, assault rifles, all different types of people. They spent well in excess of $10 million. It's probably more like 20 now, right? Doing, you know, paying for regular time, overtime, hazard pay, fuel costs, munitions costs, you know, you gotta pay for that tear gas. Uh, food, you gotta feed them and drink. You gotta feed them, you know, you gotta feed them and hydrate them, right? Medical costs, vehicle maintenance, upkeep, 
They did all of that for 500 plus officers from all over the region who mostly were out here on standby, mm -hmm. waiting for something to happen and over responding to what really was happening. Some of it, right? Now, had they taken that money, let's say, they, let's say the total bill that the taxpayers got to pay on this is $20 million. If they take $10 million and invest it in the uh, derelict neighborhoods in these cities, mowing grass, tearing down vacant buildings, dilapidated properties, renovating properties that, you know, so people can move in them so we can reduce homelessness, right? The people that were seen on TV, the looters, the people that have us all here, that, I mean, they're, you know, make no mistake about it, the, the, him killing Mike Brown has us all here. The protesters brought us out. The looters made it an international, a global story. So if it weren't for the youth, these Mike Browns, if it weren't for the youth, we wouldn't all be here. It would have just been a few protests. The, the national correspondents would have never came. They could have covered it from New York or wherever they was stationed out of, and this story would be over. But because of their actions, them saying we ain't going for that, and if we gotta loot this store, apologies to the owner, and we had to shut this whole city down, apologies to Ferguson, the residents, the kids that couldn't go to school, the parents who lost some time on work, causing the fear to the citizens, you know what I'm saying? Putting, putting people's lives at risk. You're watching Black Tree on TV. Only on Soul of the South.